and Dylan did something in my heart. And um, so as I was looking for something for Women's Day, I couldn't really, I didn't know whether I was supposed to say anything or just continue like we normally do. But um, as I was looking on the internet for some things, um, this particular lady by the name of Melody Green um, came up and just the words that she was saying, it related not only to me, but I think it relates to every woman that loves the Lord. And it's called Women Arise, but it's women beyond the cave. She says, I can't shake it. In my spirit, I keep hearing God say, Women arise, women arise. With open hands lifted up to heaven, with lips ready to give praise and speak truth, with hearts soft and open, ready to receive my message. It's time to receive your spiritual inheritance, to receive your personal marching orders for this important hour. As women, we should be very encouraged. We may be soft on the outside, but we're strong and mighty in spirit. We are God's secret weapons, and the enemy knows it. He takes us seriously, even when others don't. The enemy's strategy has been to keep us quiet and in hiding, but God is doing an end thing. He is going to release so many of us at once that the enemy is not going to know what hit him. I believe in this hour the Lord is saying to his women, now is the moment when I, myself, am coming to release you. Too many of my people have turned a deaf ear to you, only those who understand the big picture and full spectrum of my heart can hear the words, women, arise. I'm going to lay such an incredible anointing on women who are willing to step out. I am tired of fighting the war with only half of my army. Where are my women? Where are the ones I call to teach, to preach, to blaze those trails? Even the bravest of men shudder to go. Where are my women? Where are they? Have they not heard my call? After hearing this from the Lord, in my mind's eye, I saw a cave. I looked closer, and many women were in it, too many, and they were afraid to come out. Some felt the cave was a safe place to stay, that only men were equipped to venture out and fight the battles beyond. Some felt content to stay because the cave was indeed their place of service. But many felt restless, unsettled. Many felt called out, but some of them had been told those feelings were wrong, so they stifled them, stuffed them down, poured guilt upon themselves. But for some, those feelings could not be ignored because for some, their call could only be, be, be fulfilled beyond the cave. And we have women that are in the Bible that are called prophetesses. We have Miriam, who was a prophet. She was the sister of Aaron, one of the three main leaders with Moses and Aaron. We have Huldah, the prophet, and she was also the keeper of the wardrobe. Isaiah's wife, she was a prophetess. We have Anna, who was a praying prophetess. We have Philip, who was an evangelist that had four daughters that prophesied. We also have examples of biblical women that had different roles. We had the Pro uh, Proverbs 31 woman. She was involved in the household of business and issues and bought and sold real estate and ministered to the poor. There was the woman at the well. She was considered by many to be the first evangelist in the Bible. And there was Phoebe, a deaconess who washed the feet of the saints. Then we have a couple whose name was Priscilla and Aquila, a husband and wife teaching team. We have Lydia, who is known as the first convert in all of Europe. And then we have Deborah. She was a prophetess and a judge. She was a prophetess and a judge, but she was a married woman who had a job outside her home. Deborah judged a nation. I don't know what kind of job her husband had, but the nation came to his wife for ruling. Deborah carried a governmental mantle, and we could safely assume she also had the gift of wisdom and discernment. She was trusted to disperse wisdom for the whole nation. 
When she called for the army commander of Barrack and told him it was time to go to war, Barrack wouldn't go to battle unless Deborah went with him. Everyone knew that Deborah heard from God. Deborah prophesied that the Lord would give Sisera to Barak, and God did it through the hands of a woman by the name of Jael. And she drove a tent peg into Sisera's head and delivered him into the hands of Barak. And then we have Esther, who was a godly queen, who through her intercession saved the Jewish race. She gave her heart to the Lord, and God gave her a strategy to become the queen, and she also won the king's heart. When the whole Jewish nation was in line for extermination, Esther fasted and prayed, and God gave her intricate, day-by-day -day wisdom with split-second timing. And only God could have orchestrated such an incredible deliverance for the Jewish nation. And then we find many years later, you've probably heard of Joan of Arc, a young girl from a poor village in France that began to hear from God speaking to her. Her faith and her visions took her before her government with a strategy and a plan. Joan of Arc became the only teenager in all of history ever to lead the army of a nation. And then hundreds of years later, there were four teenage girls that were sent to America from England on a mission. The Salvation Army was flourishing in England, but was unknown in America. Within months, these teenagers started a movement in America that is still going strong today. And many people don't know that it was these teenage girls that actually launched the Salvation Army in America. Many have heard of Mother Teresa. She was a young Albanian woman who went to India as a school teacher. But while she was there, she felt a call from God to help the poorest of the poor. And she walked out in the streets of India without any money in her pocket and simply began to pick up the dime from the gutters and take care of them. <coughs> and she lived in poverty. She was a pauper, but yet a servant of God. And she received the Nobel Prize, Peace Prize. Then there was Jackie Pullinger, who left the UK on a freighter, believing God would tell her when to get off. She was just going to continue riding until it was time for her to die. And the ship docked in Hong Kong, and when she got off, she didn't, knew no one, yet she wandered into the walled city filled with heroin addicts, prostitutes, and violent gangs. It was so terrible in there that the police wouldn't even go in. But God found a young English girl who was willing to show and show the love of Jesus to those forgotten ones. Jackie, on her own, quietly and sacrificially won the trust of the worst of the worst. She learned God's secrets about the poor. She learned Chinese, and she learned the keys to praying people off of heroin addicts. Jackie is still in Hong Kong today, and because of her confirmed sacrifice, there is a flourishing Chinese church filled with ex-addicts and countless peoples with new lives. Today, the mission field is filled with women who are leading churches and pioneering works in remote tribes and villages. They are preaching, training, and raising up native pastors so God's work can grow. There are also women serving in the suburbs and in the inner city, in the pulpit, on their knees, and in the streets. And some are prominent Bible teachers, and others are serving in a relative obscurity. We must quit comparing ourselves to one another and quit using someone else's measuring stick on ourselves. Our eyes must be focused on Jesus, and our goal is to do and be whatever brings Him pleasure. We are each planted in a garden, and in the midst of a great variety of flowers, each has its own color, fragrance, and season of blooming. <coughs> our individual life, when lived to the fullest, releases our own unique aroma to the Lord. This collective blend of individual fragrances woos and draws the Spirit's presence to walk among us. Whether we are a man or a woman is really not the main issue. The issue is, are you being the unique vessel that God has created you to be? Women, I encourage you to step out of your self-made limitations and be the person God is longing for you to be. Step out of your cave and see how God wants you to use you. And Lord, I pray in Jesus' name right now that God will just use the women of this church, that they will become Deborahs and Esthers to their people, and especially the Esthers that will come forth and lead a nation, the rest
Appahannock Nation and other nations of Native American people. Lord, I ask that you would just bless them and honor them as they come to realize that it's not all about us ourselves, including me, that it's about knowing the Lord Jesus Christ and what he wants for our lives. And Lord, I ask that you will just reveal these to the women that are here today, so that when uh, they are in their caves, that they will meditate on your word. And Lord, that you will just reveal to them what it is that you want them to be, and that they will be willing to come out of that cave and not stay in there, but they will step out for Christ's sake, in Jesus' name. <laughs> Lord, now I just honor the women of our church. Thank you. Mm -hmm.